Hello again, Acron fans! We are back, day four of the 2012 Christmas Tournament casts, and this is the second game. We'll be seeing Ferreter versus J Raccoon. Just saw Ferreter versus Vermine, which is a bit of a turtle heavy match. But now we get to watch Ferreter fight up against J Raccoon. And let's get started. So we have J Raccoon is going to be, oops, he's in the top right corner. He hasn't chosen his race. Probably going to be random. He's been playing random a lot this tournament. Ferreter we saw already go for Grekum and very quickly getting himself set up. Getting his Arcticus for a tank. This is Act Natural once again, just like the previous match. So Ferreter has some experience on this one. Jericoon, I don't believe, has played on this one in this tournament. So like I mentioned, this is, I think, the second game in Act Natural. So Jericoon getting three RPs. Probably will get an importer fairly soon. And then from there, Factory. Act Natural is a somewhat small map, though... With diagonal start locations, it can feel considerably larger than even some of the maps that are larger in absolute dimensions. So this is one of the larger small maps in the game. So I expect that the players will probably see if their opponents are going for all-ins, but will likely not attempt all-ins too much themselves. I should also point out that the main base in Act Natural has only one entrance at the front here. It's a fairly wide entrance, but... It is still a singular entrance. There isn't any second entrance like there is in a map like Hills. Actually, Hills, the main bases have three entrances each. So, it's very vulnerable. But in Act Natural, it's very easy to defend, especially the crates. So, it's a lot easier to go for an expansion heavy strategy rather than going for a more rush based strategy. You can survive longer with an economy based strategy, and you don't have to worry as much about all ins because both of the distance and the difficulty in harassing the crates without going through your entire main base first. However, it is still a fairly small map, which means such rushes are possible. Anyhow, J Raccoon not yet building up an importer. Don't know where that is. Both players are kind of tweaking their early economy, making sure they get it absolutely perfect. Ferreter going very quickly for Octo Scout. J Raccoon also has Infantry Scout going up, but that doesn't hit for another minute or so from when we're looking. Octo Scout, however, going at 47 seconds, it will be going straight into J Raccoon's main base. And J Raccoon, on the other hand, has not seen it propagate to him yet. He is still building up his economy, not even going for importers. He's going purely for economy. We saw another RP coming in. Yep, there's a fourth RP. He is going. He's going to have a later strategy, and the auto, the scouting auto, getting killed off by special ops, so that will not be able to see what Ferreter's for Jericoon's up to. Jericoon, however, has been exposed for being CISO, rather that he has been chosen to play CISO by the random number generator. But he's been playing CISO a lot, actually. This tournament, he's he's been playing mostly CISO and Vecchio, as far as I recall. He has, he mained Grekum prior, so I'm a bit suspicious how well this will work. But it'd be interesting to see if he manages to pull it off. Ferret, on the other hand, has been playing Grekum pretty regularly, and I expect he's going to have no problem dealing with whatever Jericho throws at him, at least in the early game where... It, early game in this tournament has been the majority of the tournament. Like I said, Hills, very rush heavy, and that's been the most favorite map of this tournament. The most commonly played map. Act Natural may be a bit of an adjustment for Ferreter, though he did win last game, but Vermind was doing some odd things. J Raccoon, however, J Raccoon is risking himself a fair amount by throwing all of his early resources into economy, not even worrying about importers, not even worrying about factories or anything. He has no way of getting through this without avoiding being attacked or blocking off any incoming attacks, which these scouting forces did do, but that will be a bit of a challenge if Ferreter goes for a rush himself, and it looks like Ferreter is getting an Octopod for defense, but it's the same thing in the last game, that Octopod will be used for attack in a couple minutes. So finally, here we go at the two minute mark, an importer coming up after five RPs, J Raccoon feeling very comfortable with this. And he has his QP coming in. He's probably going to build up a factory, and I wouldn't be surprised if a Macrofab came up soon after. And a second importer, too. Hmm. He might be going for a faster ATHC strategy. I I wouldn't doubt that, but on the other hand, with the economy he's getting going, I think a Macrofab might just be what he's going to pull up. Possibly Proxy. He has a Marine over in Ferreter's main base, or near Ferreter's main base. Ferreter, however, moving his Octobot up to get rid of these two infantry, so Jericoon will have to retreat them completely if he wants to make sure that he has a proxy builder without having to build a new one. 
So the importers are up, the factory is almost up, and he has two reserves now when the factory is up. Possibly, yeah, he'll have three when the factory is completely finished, unless he builds in the infantry. And like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if a macrofab came up from there. So Ferreter is focused about two minutes down from J-Raccoon. I think J-Raccoon is going to lead this infantry to die to the Octopod. So he will not have an easy proxy, which may be what he's going for. I don't know. He will have to go... He has a... He has the possibility of retreating. He has enough orders with which to do so, and it looks like at the edge of the Implevable Pass, he is focused, but he's... He is moving them away. He is getting them out of the way, moving towards the natural expansion, probably going to build up a factory, or... Well, there's not much else he could really build that'd be of much use, oh, except maybe a comm center, over by the ramp between the natural and the third. And his factory, where he's focused, is not quite up yet, halfway up. And we did see he was building an expansion towards the natural, but he appears to be going towards the northwest base, the safe one in the back, that Ferreter will not likely find. Ferreter getting his bubble wrap up, it's completed now, and he will have... will be completed very soon, there we go. And then he'll be building up tech quite shortly after, but he needs more QPRPs in order to make that work, so I don't think he's going to be building that up. I mean, he obviously can't build it up yet, he only has 4 QP. But I would imagine he'd be getting 2 or 3 QPRPs rather than just a minimum of 1 before he gets advanced structures and really focuses on air units and teching up. So right now I'd say Jericoon is ahead. He has more production, he has more tech, he has machinery by the way, and he has a much healthier economy. On the other hand, Ferdur has reefs, and that's going to take a little bit for Jericoon to get through. Jericoon, however, did he, I think he may have lost those infantry. I don't see them on here, but the red time of will show it. There's no damage for them. But it doesn't appear that they're over here. So, ATHC is coming up. It looks like Jericoon is, in fact, going for fast ATHC, but here we have his builders on the red time wave and building a proxy factory right next to the natural expansion, relying on Ferreter not expanding, by the way. And Ferreter, however, isn't expanding. He is staying entirely inside his main base for now. And the last game, he didn't much expand either. He does, however, have an Octo running through the center expansion, double-checking four proxies. Ironically enough, missing the one proxy where it actually exists. So Jericoon being very clever in where he places it. Because earlier games, since he proxies over by this expansion, not really in the center so much, but this expansion was popular. ATCs are getting rid of the Octo. No need to worry about it. The Octo might be able to kill one of them, but that's about it. Rarely you'd see them here, but this is where you'd be concerned, and the rest near the natural expansion. That's some pretty simple proxy locations that someone might take. This is a proxy location by someone who knows about where proxy locations can be. A mech coming up. I expect a proxy macrofab on this ramp here. And Ferreter, really is just a matter of him. If he spots this, then it's going to be a bit harder. But it's not like Jericoon doesn't have a solid main base. However, he does not have a lot of production in his main base for the resources he has. And here's that macrofab that is almost being built. Jericoon does not have enough resources to completely build it, but he will very shortly. And once that comes up, Martanks. I guarantee you, Martanks will be coming up. And here are some ATHC, couple ATHCs. First two out of the factory. It doesn't appear to be any more coming up, but really there's no need to. The ATHCs are pretty much just a prelude to Martanks, and I'm sure Ferreter's aware that these are coming, but I don't see him being aware of where they're coming from. That Octo that scouted out for proxies, not finding any, but probably will find the main base, has nothing in it. And if he knows Jericoon well enough, and he knows that Jericoon knows what he's doing, he will be suspicious right about now. And it appears he is. He's going back to the edge of the Implayable Past. He is finding the proxy, and good job, Ferreter. He got suspicious at the right time. Just before the Macrofab comes up, too, but... Did he just... Oh, this is... This is not what we're seeing. The green time wave is the accurate one. The Octo finding the mech before it builds up the Macrofab. And J Raccoon just losing that mech. J Raccoon trying to do what he can back in the Implayable Pass to deal with this. But he does not have enough time to do this. Trying to get his mech out of the way, but no, he's not. He gets the macrofab up, however. That macrofab is building. It is safe. Ferret does not have the units to take it down, but he is fully aware of what's coming. And, like I said, I'm very glad to see that Ferret did think, Oh, hey, there's not enough in his main base. Because I've been worried for a little while that Akron metagame wasn't developed enough, that someone would look in a main base and go, Hey, there isn't enough. But apparently it is, and that makes me happy. Because... It's a common thing in other, in more, in StarCraft specifically, but just in general in more developed RTS games with metagame that's better well under, or better understood. 
that if you don't see certain things, you know that your opponent has them somewhere, just not in their main base. And it's good to see that Akron, there's enough knowledge about what can happen in Akron that not seeing something in the main base will arouse suspicion. And really, see the main base stack here, nothing is going on, healing is way too powerful. But Martanks, here they come, and that is going to be... That's going to be very difficult for Fair to deal with. He has advanced structures, he has a spire, he has Octopods coming up, which will help because Martanks are not artillery anymore. But if he gets Twin Mars, if Jericoon gets ground units and then merges the Martanks, that will be extremely scary. That would be the thing I'd do right now, is get... Well, move one of the other RPs to QP for a little while to get enough... to get 40 QP for ground units, and then from there move on to merging these Martanks. Because on their own, Martanks are going to be okay, but they're going to have a hard time against the Octopods coming in from Ferreter. Well, they're preparing to come in, but they will be coming in very shortly. Oh, well, from Ferreter's point of view, it's... There we go. Back near the Unplayable Past. And Ferreter, just double-checking the ATCs. They are retreating. They will be, as we saw before, defending, or helping to defend the Macrofab. But one Martank and two ATCs will probably go down to these Octopods. If Ferreter attacks now, but Ferreter is instead waiting, getting too far, well, stepping in a far, it looks like he's building another expansion triad. And I should point out at the same time that Jericoon is building expansions in the northwest and southeast. He's getting himself a lot of RPs around the corners of the map, making sure that he has at least some safety. And the Martank's coming in, and Jericoon is the one initiating. I think Ferreter wants to initiate, and he is definitely initiating further in the past, so Jericoon. His battle that's going decently well is not the one that's actually happening. The one that's actually happening is going to be happening before he gets all of his Martanks, but the ATCs will at least buy him some time to build up those Martanks. But the positioning is going to be terrible. These Martanks, not in position to help defend. Coming in one at a time, they are going down too quickly to actually deal any real damage. These three Octopods will tear down this base if Jericho is not paying attention, but he is, he is jumping back, paying some attention to this. But he doesn't have a third Martank, and that's going to be all he needs. But no, he does not have it. Not getting rid of these Octopods. One Octopod barely alive, but that's enough. Getting rid of the two Martanks. The third Martank coming in. Going to try to do what it can, but Martanks are not going to be great against Octopods. The Octopods simply being distracted. The only reason why the Martanks had a chance thus far. And this is not going to go well for the Martanks. Any change to the plans. But, oh, but he has routed Ferreter. Ferreter retreating his Octopod at base, not wanting to lose it. But getting a Faropod as well. This is... Going to go terribly. MFB coming up for J Raccoon. I do not... I do not ever expect to see an MFB, but I'm very glad it's come up. MFBs are healer units. They are ex extremely powerful he healer units. And recovery units, but do not detect. An ATHC right now would be perfect. If he grabs one of those, he'll at least be able to spot this far pod and do something to it. More Martanks coming up. No ground units being built up yet. Like I said, no additional QPRPs in the main base. There is one... Southeast, and I don't see any Northwest. And some. Oh, right where Fair is expanding, Jericho's decided to place a couple more QPRPs. Well, had decided to. He's aborted that, clearly. But Fair, aware of where Jericho is expanding to, roughly. However, I think he's much more concerned about the Macrofab here than he is about anything else. He needs to get his, ma his Octopods up. Getting seven pods up as well. Try to just scout around the map. Make sure that Fair doesn't have anything around the map. And he sees that he does. Finding one of his expansion marines, getting rid of that, getting rid of his other expansion fairly soon. The Faropod not being used to do anything yet, and the Octopods also being held back in the main base. Ferreter does have enough money to build more units, but I think he might be waiting for yet another Faropod. He only has 69 QP, he needs another 20 or so, 30 or so, before he can actually get that Faropod up. And more Martanks, with Frigate support as well, and there is no ATHC, so no detection yet. No turrets as well for detection. This, this Faropod is huge. Ferret has actually been attacked by this since the Unplayable Past, and getting rid of everything he has... Sorry, Ferret has been attacking with this. So, J Raccoon, not in a great spot, but deciding to try his luck with the Martanks, and that's not going to go very well at all. So, J Raccoon, I don't know why he didn't build ATHCs, but that, I believe, may have... Well, he set him back. I don't think it's cost him the game completely at this point. He's not in a completely unstable position. He's just... He's just been overexpanding a little bit too much. But still, he's been having an advantage this entire game. Uh, oh. And Jericoon, however, is surrendering. Might have been busy during the real game, but no, Jericoon has in fact surrendered. A little anticlimactic, I'm afraid. But congratulations to Ferreter nonetheless. 
Looked like he was going for a comeback regardless. And that is... Well, that is game two for day four. So, the next couple games will be Rock Mox... Actually, next two or three games is the best of three. Will be Rock Mox versus Ferreter. And from there, we will have... Oh. So, yeah, Rock Mox versus Ferreter. That will be the, probably the last games for today. And then tomorrow, whoever wins between that will be fighting Crown Aberrant. And that will be what we go over tomorrow. But for today, let's finish off with Rockmox vs. Ferreter. But I'll be back in just a minute with that. So stay tuned. <laughs> 